Hello, dear friends. This is Father Jose. How are you? Uh, as you know, I am in the process of writing a complete copy of the Gospel of John in the original language, which is uh, Greek. And so some people have been asking me questions about this particular project. So I would like to share some thoughts about that. Um, some friends have asked me, why are you doing this and why now? And there are several reasons. Well, first of all, this is something that I wanted to do for a long time, and I, I haven't had the chance to do it. In the past, I had made uh, short passages, like uh, written in scroll, um, actually in, in papyrus, and written certain passages. Like, for example, I have fought the good fight, I have finished race, I have competed well. Uh, or, for example, love is patient, love is kind, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, and I have written those loose leaves and then framed them as gifts to friends for a special occasions, for example, a wedding, things like that. So I have done small passages in the past and and um, I found that actually fascinating. And so just uh, one day I, I thought that it would be a cool idea to write the entire, an entire book, a complete book of the New Testament and especially the Gospel of John. The other reason why I'm doing this is because, um, as you know, I have a Bible museum and the majority of biblical texts that have survived of the New Testament, they are mainly sheets, meaning one page or one corner of a page. Actually, I can, some of them are behind me. I'm gonna switch my camera around if I can. Uh, I don't think I can, so. I will have to go like this thing. So, as you can see, they are all pages, you know? They are one page, like one portion of a page. Right there is a little quarter of a page. That's a full page from Matthew. That's John. This is John as well, one single page. And another page, portion of a page, tiny piece of a page of the Book of Revelation a full page of 1 Corinthians. So most of them are just individual sheets. And so, and when we look at them, they don't um, give us a sense of what the full book looked like. And so I was always fascinated with, but fascinated with the idea of seeing an actual complete copy of a, a book of, of the New Testament, the same way it was written almost 2000 years ago when they were first written. Another question is, why not write in English or in Spanish, considering that those are my main languages? Well, why Greek is the question. You know, some people have even said, why do you even have to translate into Greek the Bible? <laughs> and I kind of smile because it's exactly the opposite way around. Uh, actually, the New Testament was written in Greek. The Old Testament was written mainly in Hebrew and uh, on some parts in Greek as well. But the New Testament was completely written in Greek. And so when I am writing the text in Greek, I'm not translating, I am actually transcribing the original language in which the gospels were written, in this case, the Gospel of John. So why in that language? Well, because um, it's, it's the original language. And it is from there that modern translations are made. So the Bible that you have at home is actually a translation from what I'm writing right now. So that's that's the reason why I wanted to go with the original language. Another one asks, uh, do you speak Greek fluently? No, I don't. No, really, I don't. I can read. When I was in Greece, for example, I can read the signs and have an idea of what they say, but no, I do not speak uh, uh, Greek. And so I did have to learn the alphabet. I did have to study ancient Greek, um, what is called Koine Greek, uh, from New Testament times. And so that allows me to transcribe the, the, the text. Uh, do I fully understand every single word I write? No. Uh, so I have to use dictionaries and I have to make use of, um, of um, other resources in order to fully understand what the biblical text says. Now, having read the scriptures so many times, especially through a liturgical calendar, I kind of have an idea of what comes next, okay? So, so for example, when the child brings 
um, the, the, the loaves of bread and the fish, I know what's gonna happen next, which is the multiplication. So the familiarity of the biblical stories help a lot in understanding and translating on the spot the, the biblical text that is presented. So there is another question that says, in the end, will the manuscript look like a first century copy of a gospel? And the answer is yes and no. Yes, in the sense that at the end, it's gonna be like one volume, meaning that when John, for example, wrote his gospel, he wrote it in individual sheets that were bound together, sewn, and then had a cover. In this case, it's a cover of, of leather. And so, and then from these texts, copies were made and copies and copies and copies and then translations until now our times in which we can actually receive the biblical text even in applications on computer, for example. Uh, so in that sense that is gonna be a, a, a book, yes. In that sense, that's, that's true. It's gonna look like something that was written 2000 years ago. But in a different sense, it's not going to look like uh, what a, uh, like a text that was written 2,000 years ago, because um, first of all, I am writing it in a minuscule letters. The majority of uh, text in the New Testament, the ancient papyri that have been preserved, majority are actually in uppercase, so they are all capital letters. So what I what I'm writing is in small letters, which would be lowercase. The other difference is that the one that I am writing here actually has chapter numbers and verses. The original texts, for example, the manuscript of John or of Matthew or of Luke, they didn't have chapters, they didn't have titles, they didn't have anything. It's just straight text, not even spaces in between words in many instances. So, so uh, having accumulated the knowledge of 2000 years of biblical, um, texts, it is easier to include the chapters, include the verses. I am not including titles because there are no titles in the original text. Um, then, um, so in that sense, it's not gonna look like an original text of 2000 years ago because it includes more information than the original manuscripts would have had at the time, okay? Then another question is, what kind of pen do, the, do you use? People think that I'm using these fancy, you know, like feather-like pens. Not really, I mean, this is what I use. I bought it at Meyer. <laughs> it, uh, it is a precise rolling pen, 0 0.7. I start with 0 0.5, and then I graduated to 0 0.7 because 0 0.7 allows to see the text better actually uh, you will see the difference my very first page was in 0 0.5 so it is a very thin uh, print my very second page i switched immediately into 0 0.7 and it is a lot more visible because um, because the, the 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 mark is thicker and so you can actually the page can receive more ink and therefore it's more visible. Uh, how do you correct mistakes? What are common mistakes? Um, I delete mistakes by using actually a knife. So this is like a surgical um, blade. And so I just scrape the paper so as to take out the, the surface of the paper that has the mistake um, and then I write the correct uh, information and then I use color pencils to fill in the, uh, the void because when I scrape it out, the page turns white because this is aged like paper. So it's not aged through inside. So when I scrape it, it looks white. It doesn't have the, the color of of the exterior, so so I have to kind of mask the, the the empty spot that I have scraped off. Uh, there are all kind, all other kinds of mistakes that are made. The, the the main mistake that I make is confusing letters that 
in the Greek alphabet are multiple, so there are several of them. For example, in the Greek alphabet, there are two O's, two S, two K or X sound. And so um, there are two, well, there is one B. Um, there, I think those are the main ones. So there are duplicates that have the same sound, but they are different letters. So it's easy to confuse one or the other. Another mistake that I make is that when I am looking at the actual text and then I am copying it, if in two sentences the same word repeats, and I may be copying the first word, but then when I'm and then when I lift up my eyes to look and continue that that same sentence, my eye jumps to the second word on a sentence after, and therefore I skip an entire line. And so those are terrible mistakes, you know? And so what do I do is, is, if I am able to scratch out the mistake that I made, I will. If I am not able, I will have to write in small letters in between the lines, just the same way that the ancient scribes were able to correct mistakes. They had no problems in writing a tiny sentence in between lines to correct the mistake that was made or to fill in the word that was missing or the entire sentence that was missing. So, so in that sense, I gave myself permission to correct the text the same way that it was corrected back then when the original texts were written. Uh, how did you find the book that you are using? And okay, so this is the book that I found. It actually comes with a leather belt around it and it wraps it around and uh, is this you can see these the straps that take care of the bounds so there are a bunch of groups of pages that are flipped that are folded and then they are tied together with uh, some leather strips um, I'm going to show you perfect example is this I don't know if you you see the leather here the leather strap this is an empty page and that leather strap is woven in this external part of the actual book I actually reached to that point um, a couple days ago when I saw the bound this is the actual strap that binds this group of pages okay now uh, how did I found this? Uh, basically through Amazon. Uh, so one day I was looking for ancient manuscripts there because from time to time they have good deals about copies of ancient manuscripts. And then there was a suggested purchase that spoke about vintage journals, vintage journals. And I'm like, this is interesting. So I clicked and it opened a whole new world of books especially for people that like a scrapbooking, writing journal, journaling, uh, writing memories. Uh, some people, for example, that have, that like to do old fashioned things or things that look old fashioned, even though the items are not old, but they're aged. And so it was a, it's a whole new world of vintage journals. And so I found one that would look the, the, the closest possible to a actual book made in the first century. And that's that's the one that I found. There are others that have all kinds of things like locks and chains and all fancy stuff that I'm not interested in. I was interested in papers bound together, leather straps and leather, leather covered. So that's what I was interested in. And so this is how I found this one. I had to calculate the amount of pages because I didn't want to run into the problem of getting to the last page and the manuscript not being finished. So I made sure to buy one that would have enough pages to have to contain the one complete gospel. At the time I had not decided yet uh, which gospel to write, but quickly I, I concluded to do the Gospel of John because that's my favorite gospel. It's also the gospel in which I did my um, my thesis so why not to have that experience and, and the other the other thing is that i wanted it to look as much as possible to ancient manuscripts 
Now, ideally, if I wanted to make it as close as possible to the original, it would have to be in papyrus. But writing on papyrus is very complicated. Papyrus is thicker and is very difficult to write on. And there are no vintage journals in papyrus. Well, maybe there are some now, but I don't know. But this is paper. So the pages are made of paper that have been aged so as to look um, like ancient. And of course, the, the, the edges are not polished at all. So it really looks like an ancient uh, manuscript. So, so that's why I, I, uh, I, I chose this particular item. I gave them a nice review also on Amazon too. Uh, there is another question saying, there is always a candle and background music. Actually, I'm gonna put the background music right now. Um, so there is always a candle. Yes, there is. So so this is, this is my candle right there. It just helps to, uh, to give more ambience. I always put a couple of uh, sheets of uh, paper towels or, or napkins and I put the background on my iPad if you just look for relaxing music or harp music you have an incredible amount of options you know 10 hours of relaxing music and things like that so you have a lot of a lot of opportunities for background music another thing that I want to show here is this is what I use for the software from which I copy the biblical text. So like, for example, here, I am ready to write the passage of walking on water. Uh, you probably see it the opposite way in the, because of the camera. But in, in this software, what I have is the original Greek text and underneath I have the English language. And so that gives me an idea of what I'm writing. And if I want to go in depth into a particular word, I just tap on the word and it gives me more information about that particular word. And if I want to um, do more research about that word. This is my scribing set. It's basically my table. It's my dining table. You can see all my salt and pepper, olive oil and all that stuff. And so that's, this is what I do. I do it in the living room. There is Luke over there. He's hiding somewhere. And so this is the living room, the rectory, and behind is the actual um, museum. So this is nothing fancy, it's just the, the dining table. Another thing that I have here is this little pedestal, which is where I put my phone and allows me to record uh, while I'm writing. Um, this is really nice because it doesn't bother me. I'm not hitting it when I am writing. And so it's just like it's there, but like it's not there, you know? And so it, um, it allows me to record while I'm writing. Uh, another reason why I record when I write is because it makes me focus. Because it's almost like a, another set of eyes that are seeing the project, so I'm focused. I'm not checking my Facebook, I'm not checking text messages. We can because the phone is the one that is recording. And so it helps me to, to focus on what I am doing at that particular uh, moment. Um, another thing, uh, there are some other questions right here. And yeah, where do you write is, I already shared that with you where I'm writing in my living room. Uh, it's pretty relaxing. I have an extra set of lamps so that illuminate the manuscript a little bit better. And, um, and then the other question is, what do I use as the original text in order to write from there the, the, the text that I write in, 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 in this journal? And this is it. It's, the, um, it's called the Novum Testamentum Grece, Novum Testamentum Grece, which is the Greek text of the New Testament. So, so what I have here in my hands is called the 27, Nest, 27 edition of the Nestle Island of the New Testament in Greek. So basically what this is, is uh, the final result of after studying all the ancient manuscripts, the copies that are of the New Testament that have survived to this time. So let me, let me explain that again. So there are from the first six centuries 
of New Testament times, so first century to the fifth into the sixth century AD, there are about 5,800 Greek manuscripts or written testimonials with bi biblical text of the New Testament. So that means that when the first, the original New Testament texts were written, multiple copies of those were made. And those copies of all of them, about 5,800 written testimonials, have survived to this day. And so those 5,800 are compared because, as you know, when you don't have a photocopier or a camera, there is the possibility of making mistakes, as, as I have explained already, of missing lines, or maybe a scribe taking the liberty of change, changing the biblical text. And so, for that reason, they, there is this science of comparing manuscripts of the uh, New Testament, also of the Old Testament, just to make sure when the texts coincide and when there are differences, you know. And so as, they, as the experts in scripture compare the 5,800 written testimonials, they realize that about 98% of the text has been preserved verbatim. So 98% coincides. And there is always that 2% in which manuscripts differ. Perhaps one biblical passage that one manuscript doesn't include or one scribe decided to purposely change the text of that particular verse, uh, or another um, scribe decided to add text to the biblical text. That's very possible too. And so for that reason, there is all this comparison of manuscripts. This is called textual criticism. Now, once all the texts that have survived is compared, then it's put together where there is this process of putting together all the manuscripts into a single text, which is called a normative text. And that's what this Bible is, which is the 27th edition of the Nestle Allen Greek New Testament. And so that means that of all the Bibles that are out there in the world translated in any language, all the modern Bibles, they have to translate the New Testament from here, from this one normative text, which is the coming together of the study of all the 5,800 manuscripts that have survived of the New Testament. That's why we have this normative text. Now, this normative text is not static. It's actually dynamic. That's why there are 27 editions. That means that in the first edition, they had available a certain amount of manuscripts. Second edition, perhaps they discovered new manuscripts, and so they added few changes there. And so we are now in the 27th edition. That means that we have more ancient manuscripts available to us this day, now in 2021. And so for that reason, the, the 20, there is a 28th uh, edition, Probably in the future, there will be a 29th edition. As more ancient manuscripts are available, these will continue updating. But let us remember that 98% of all the New Testament manuscripts coincide in what they say pretty much word for word. That means that the biblical text of the New Testament has been preserved in its integrity. Um, uh, it, it, the accuracy is enormous. It's amazing. No, no, no other no other text in the history of the world has been copied as faithfully as the New Testament. So that's what I wanted to, to mention. So, so technically, I'm copying from here into here, okay? Now, this has been digitized. And so for that reason, I use the iPad because then I can zoom up and zoom in and all of that. But it's the same text that has been digitized into a um, electronic form. That's why I use the the um, the actual um, iPad for that with a software. Then there are a couple more questions. When do you take time to write? Um, at night, mainly at night, when I have some free time instead of watching TV, I will just take an hour or two to to write the biblical text. Whenever I have uh, some free time, sometimes I don't have inspiration, so I don't write. Sometimes I just feel this rush to sit down and copy the text. And so 
that's that's when I do it. And the other thing is that that I that I realize is the amount of time that it takes. It takes a lot of time. Yes, there was a time in which in the history of the church there were scribes whose job was precisely this. Writing was a profession because the majority of people were illiterate. And so only certain people had the capacity of writing or the training to do so. And so uh, now everybody, pretty much everybody knows how to write and read, but that wasn't the case for the most of the history of the church. I, I'm just amazed of the amount of time that it takes. It takes a long time to write. Um, the other day that I was writing the passage of the multiplication of fishes and loaves, it was almost two hours. Um, how many verses? It was like about 24 verses, two hours to write 24 verses. So, so it's going to take a lot of hours to write the entire manuscript. Um, so I have no timeline, so whenever I finish, I finish, you know. So right now I am in the, in the Gospel of John chapter 6. Actually, I, I wrote uh, the beginning of chapter 6 here, and I have written all the way to the multiplication of fish and loaves. And then after this, Jesus is going to walk on water. And that's a rather small passage, passage and immediately after that, I want to start writing the Bread of Life Discourse, which is chapter 6 uh, of the Gospel of John. We know that passage by heart because we use it all the time, especially um, anything that relates to the Eucharist, because I am the Bread of Life. Uh, we also use it in, in, in funerals because whoever eats this bread will live forever. So that's going to be the next part of the, um, of the, of the manuscript. So it takes time, it's tedious, um, but I really wanted to have the experience to know what it's like to be a scribe because I show all these biblical pieces and I enjoy doing that, but that's something that somebody else did. Well, in this case, I, I wanted to have the experience of doing it myself and, and see where it leads me. What am I going to do once I'm done with the Gospel of John? I don't know. Uh, depending on how much space uh, the, this, this vintage journal leaves, I may write another book. I, I was thinking maybe the letters of John or maybe the book of Revelation because we attribute the book of Revelation also to John. So just to have the gospel and the book of Revelation, that could be, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to leave that as an open-ended question. Um, but uh, for now, my goal is to write the entire gospel of John. Uh, and then one last one. There are so many Bibles already, and you have your own Bible museum while writing your own copy of a gospel. I think I have responded that uh, mainly to have the experience to know what it feels like to write the text uh, myself. I um, and and also in gratitude to all the people that throughout the two thousand years history of the church have taken the time to copy and to multiply copies of the biblical text so that people could still read it in church, at home, as part of their daily devotional. Really, it's, it's a way of honoring the people that have given their life to um, reproduce the biblical text. These are ancient stories that speak to us and they really touch us in a deep way in our spirit. I mean, think about the comfort that these biblical texts have brought to a lot of people, especially going through so much uh, difficulty, for example. You know, when I was writing the story of the Samaritan woman, for example, uh, give me a drink and and, and the Samaritans coming to Jesus. This, this is a passage that year after year is used during the scrutiny gospels uh, for the RCIA, for example. Or when I was writing the calling of the first disciples of Jesus, it made me think of many vocation stories that started just like that. Jesus saying, come and, and follow me. Or writing even the prologue of the gospel of John and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
to, to think of the divinity of Christ as he became the word of life to us, the word from the Father. The multiplication of fishes and loaves, um, it spoke to me, uh, of course, about the Eucharist, but also about the table of plenty, uh, how the Lord gives us more than enough than we need. And um, for me, who, for example, I struggle with, with food, which is never enough because I always eat more than what I should, uh, it reveals to me the importance of understanding that God provides more than enough, that I don't need to be anxious about it. Uh, so it speaks to me in, in so many levels. Um, the conversation of Nicodemus and Jesus also, how he comes at night and he's afraid of his fellow Pharisees and for that reason he comes at night and to write that conversation. And of course the famous passage of for God so loved the world that sent his only song that, uh, that has inspired generations of Christians throughout the 2000 years history of the church. So anyway, so these are some thoughts about uh, the Gospel of John and this uh, personal project of copying the, the entire gospel. We'll see where it, we'll see where it leads us. And, um, and just know that as I write these pages, I, I pray for many people. I pray for all of you. And so, well, thank you for listening today and God bless you and have a blessed uh, day. Bye.